been another month, so I'm here to share with you my favorite things from the month of June. First, I got some enamelware plates. Um, these, I first encountered a version of them at Moss Mountain Farm when I visited, not this summer, but last. And then again at War Eagle Mill, and they have such a fun, adventurous, campy vibe that um, I knew I wanted to have them in my kitchen. They're like, um, these are antique, but they're made in that, um, that style. These are by Crow Canyon Home. I'll put the link to where I got them in the doobly do below. Um, I love, this is called splatterware. There's also the kind that has very faint, like tiny, tiny white dots, but this is like uh, white with um, blue splatters that are large and very, uh, very pretty. So I've been enjoying, we've been enjoying eating on these and because I don't want to put them in the dishwasher, we're doing the dishes right away, which is also a uh, bonus. We kept our other plates for other times, but I have four of these now and I'm really excited to, to use them. They make uh, breakfast and things a little bit more special. So these are cool. Then, uh, another favorite thing is this cup. This is not a Yeti. Um, there's a version of these that are made by Yeti that are super expensive. This one was like 10-ish dollars from Walmart. It's like a Ozark brand. I can put the link to that below too. This keeps your drink super cool or super hot in theory, but I haven't put any tea in it yet. I've only used it for ice water. But rather than like, um, putting ice and water in a mason jar and then the the coolness all kind of sweats out of it. It doesn't stay cool for very long in this kind of heat. Whereas this will stay cool all day and overnight if you let it. Um, so I've really been enjoying it. I've been drinking so much more water since I started using this thing. I also have a smaller one I'm gonna try to use to see if it'll keep my tea warm and delicious. Um, so yeah, um, the only thing is I have spilled. Uh, out of it when I was trying to carry too many things at once. So I think there's a version that has a lid uh, with a cover of the top. In the meantime, I just need to be a little more careful um, when I'm carrying this around. Also, when I take it, when I was in England, I used to have a bobble water bottle because their water needs to be filtered before you drink it. And I carried that in my purse and I had water almost everywhere that I went. I rarely got soda or they don't have sweet tea over there <laughs> so I would have hot tea or I would have water from my water bottle but since I've come to America I've started drinking a lot more sweet tea a lot more soda and I really don't feel that great when I drink all of that stuff but sometimes when you buy the combo it comes packaged inside so I'm trying to go a little bit back to my British mentality I'm starting to carry this with me with nice cold water and it just makes the decision of I've already decided what I'm gonna drink I'm gonna drink water and I feel so much better when I am hydrated. So that's number two. Then, Hamilton. I'm a little bit late to this party. So this favorite is specifically this book, um, which is just gorgeous, by the way. Let's see if I can, wait, that's upside down. <laughs> um, so I, I wasn't sure, but I ordered this so that I could read along as I listened um, to the soundtrack for the first time. I'm not a very good audible listener, um, but I hadn't seen it in person, so I didn't know how absolutely gorgeous it is. Let me see if I can start it off in the beginning and show you some of the pages. So it has the lyrics along with beautiful production photos. Um, this page is just a big, great big photo. And then some of the pages are about the history of the play and how it came to be. Some of them are uh, production photos with the lyrics overlaid. And then some of them are kind of, let's see if that'll focus, old fashioned, like, yeah, antique looking pages. Um, and one of my favorite parts when I studied theater, I sometimes, one of my favorite roles was to be a dramaturg. And that's the person who studies all the history behind a play, like in Shakespeare, what all the words meant, the different historical context and things like that. So the dramaturgical nerd inside of me loves all of these um, footnotes. So I'm working my way through the script. I'm listening to the soundtrack and I'm 
reading these footnotes, I don't know which ones these are, um, sometimes he draws comparisons to Harry Potter, which I find is really fun. Um, and then some of them are about different rap singers that he's referencing and some of them are about musicals that he's referencing. There's a lot of different references within the songs. Some of it's historical. So I'm loving that little extra information. Oh, so pretty. I just, the photos and the, the design of this book, this is one of my favorite books that I own. And I don't know if y'all can notice, but there's also um, like torn edge pages. It's so pretty. The whole design of this book is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm so, so glad I got this. I got on Amazon at a really good price and I'll put the, just uh, the link to that below as well so you can check it out and it's gonna look so great on my shelf because this isn't real leather this is like a faux leather it feels like but it looks really old-fashioned and beautiful so I haven't listened actually to the whole soundtrack yet because I'm doing this really nerdy <laughs> version of oh yeah and these are pages where you can see how he wrote how he wrote the the songs some scans of his of his notebooks I love I just love seeing behind the scenes of the creative process it I super geek out about that so I'm working very slowly through to be able to know all the context behind all the songs because I'm not like I said I'm not a great audible listener so with the lyrics coming so fast and being things that I'm not that familiar with I didn't know that much about Alexander Hamilton before I'm really enjoying taking it slow listening reading about it and then um, there's also all the information about how the play came to be. And then next, I wanna read the biography that started all of this. But if you like the soundtrack and you haven't checked out the book, you will love this. Or if you haven't listened to the soundtrack and you've been afraid you couldn't pick up if you're not an audible listener as well, this is a great way. Obviously, you can find the lyrics online, but this, what I love about it is it shows you like, this is the set during that song, or like the costume and the characters fit with the song lyrics that you're reading about so even though you're not seeing the play you're getting a really good idea of what's going on on stage um so yeah i've only listened through helpless um so no spoilers please but i'm super enjoying this and probably i'm sure next month the whole song soundtrack will be on my favorites spoiler alert and then my last favorite thing from june is my cat kidston purse I pined over these things, well not particularly the purses, anything Kath Kidston. When I was in London for grad school, people had tote bags, backpacks, all kinds of stuff. Um, when I grew up, I was never much of a floral girl, but lately I've really been liking florals and lace and that kind of stuff a little bit more. Um, and I love how this is, you can see it's a little shiny, it's an oil cloth. I think it might also be called duck, depending on uh, what term you use. Um, this is a Kath Kidston bag. It's kind of smallish, but I prefer to carry, she has larger, I prefer to carry smaller purses because I will fill it up. <laughs> and I don't want to tote tons and tons of stuff with me. So this helps me keep it to the minimum things that I need. Um, it has a snap metal closure. The inside is not the wipe off. It's just the outside. And then this one's very simple. Like I said, she has different styles, but this one I can just slot in my wallet, the other things that I need. There's one zip here. And what I usually do is I have like a big zip pouch that's about the size of this and I put that inside. So that kind of creates the extra pockets that this doesn't really have designed into it. I really love this. Um, I can't remember what this pattern is called. Um, Latimer Rose maybe I'll put the link to it below I did have to order it from England so that included paying shipping which made it a little bit more but I ordered several things and some birthday presents so it kind of all worked together when you're buying more things the shipping's a little bit more reasonable um, so yeah my Kath Kidston purse has been uh, greatly enjoyable I had another purse and it was kind of wearing out on me so I was like well, rather than just get, uh, like a couple years ago, I got a Target purse and it was just falling apart. So rather than keep buying cheap purses, I thought I would just invest in one that I really loved and that was made of a material that would hold up a little bit better. So to review, favorite things for this month, enamel wear plates, 
the Hamilton book. Let's see if I can hold everything. <laughs> Probably not. Um, this silver cup. <laughs> this is not working out for me. I'm not an octopus. Let's see. And then my Kath Kidston purse. Let's see if we can do a thumbnail here. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is going to work out for the thumbnail, but these are my favorite things from this month. Um, so I'll put the links to all of them down below. I'd love to hear what your favorite things are from this month. So leave that in comments below, and I'll see you next time. Cheers! Thank you.